Welcome to the Business Heroes Podcast. Power up your business and change the world. Welcome to the podcast. This is, once again, Jared Elrod, and I've got a very special episode for you guys today. I have a special guest. Now, I will be doing interviews from time to time, but this is an extra special guest interview. So, compared to even all the other interviews I'm going to do, I don't care if I have the President of the United States on this podcast. This is going to be my most special guest ever. And a lot of you are probably thinking, wait, what? The President? That that sounds pretty cool. Okay, so let me introduce this next guest. Let me say a few things about her. Um, this young lady that I'll, I'll introduce here in a minute, she's here with me in the studio. She started her own business and she, she came up with her idea. Um, and her business, it all came from just, you know, she had a goal she wanted to reach in her life. And rather than just, you know, complaining about, you know, bad economy, not having money, you know, better job, that kind of stuff. She came up with an idea and went out and created a business. And in her, in two times, she just started door to door. She, she's, she's got what it takes. She just went door to door. And in two different times, uh, just hitting up doors. And I think a couple... Uh, social media posts she uh, raised her goal to, to see if this was gonna work her goal was to raise $90 I know it's not a lot but she had a goal to test it she raised close to 300 um, just just a little under 300 so it's pretty impressive today I would like to introduce Liliana Elrod my daughter Lily why don't you first tell us uh, go ahead and tell us I know I just said it but why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself tell us your name uh, tell us how old you are and we'll we'll see how the interview goes from there. Okay. Um my name is Lily and What's your what's your whole name? Liliana McKenzie Elrod. Okay. How old are you? 6. I'm and I'll be 7 in December 13th. And that that's about 2 months away from now. Yeah. This is October. So Okay. So first off let's back up. What was the first thing like where did you come up with even creating a business like most kids just bug their parents I mean you're six most kids just bug their parents for money if their parents won't give it to them they bug their grandparents or like when I was your well I was older than you but when I was a kid like I did a few things like I had a lemonade stand and you know like I did I mowed lawns but that was easy I was bugging my neighbors and my my grandma and she would give me 20 bucks to mow a lawn which was my grandpa was mad about because it's way too much money what gave you the idea to actually go out walk around the neighborhood, knock on doors of people you've never met before, and ask them for money? Well, I really wanted this um, expensive Barbie camper van, and my parents didn't have the money, and I knew that if they did give it to me, it would be for my birthday or Christmas. And that's a while away so when, from that time. So I decided that I wanted to get it um, by my own somehow. And I thought about it and I thought, hey, how about um, I ask my mom and dad if they can, um, if my mom can make the cookies, um, and I can make a cookie business, and I go out door to door and sell cookies to everyone. And yes, it happened, but um, I didn't get the Barbie camper van. Okay, wait, 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 we'll get that in a second. Okay. So let's back up here. So you wanted this Barbie camper van, and just for you guys listening, it, it's a toy that was out of stock. Like, it, they didn't carry it anymore, and so the only place you could find it was on eBay. And so it's like a $60 camper van, which first off, I'm just kind of morally opposed to paying $60 for... Um, a Barbie toy, anyways. But we were gonna, we would we're gonna would have done it, you know, it's sixty bucks because I remember my dad wouldn't let me buy the Ninja Turtle little like round, oh, what's it called, that fortress thing that opened up because it was fifty dollars and that was more than a toy should have been. So I was like, okay, whatever. Problem is, it wasn't in stock anymore. They no longer carried this toy. So my wife, because she, my daughter Lily really wanted it. So my wife goes online, finds a few of them on eBay. But the $60 toy is ranging anywhere from like $100 to like over $200 online. And then this is eBay. So these are used and you don't even know if they're going to be broken or whatever. So I'm like, there's absolutely no way I'm paying $200 for a Barbie van or motorhome or whatever it is that might even get here like broken and is going to be used. 
So she first came up with the idea to do that. And I was like, well, I'm not going to tell her no. If she's going to earn her own money, like, I think that's a lot of money for a toy. But if she earns it herself, I mean, she's going to learn valuable lessons. So my question for you is, like I said, most kids wouldn't just think of like, oh, let me create a business. Like, did you have any experience to business? I mean, I obviously, I do, I run a business. And so you know that daddy, you know, runs a business. Why don't you tell us about like, do you like the idea of business? Is that something you think about or kind of where'd that come from? Oh, um, I just know that you work a lot and I, and sometimes um, I come in your office and watch you work and um, some jobs that, I, I mean, shows that I watch have jobs. So I actually know what a job is and a business is. So I want to create my own business so I can save up. But um, I didn't um, I didn't want the part of camp for bed anymore. We wait, wait, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, the last thing I will say about that is, you. So I drive around a lot of times, and well, I drive and I just listen to business books all the time. But sometimes I drive around with you, and I make you listen to my business books just because I want to listen to them, right? So I'm like, okay, you guys, you and your brother are getting kind of rowdy, so you guys just be quiet. It's nap time, anyways. Just take a nap in the back of the car while I listen to my business books. And your brother goes to sleep, but what what do you do? I listen. I stay up in the back of the car and listen to your audio books about businesses. And I look out the window and look all the pretty stuff. And you think about. It. I remember we were driving one time, and you asked me what assets were. Mm-hmm. And you you figured out that oh, so if I have assets, then I'll have the income coming in to be able to buy my own pony if I want a pony. You remember asking me that? Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> okay. So she decides she's going to do this. We say yes. We tell some family members they thought it was cool. At this point, they're just expecting to hear anything from our family because of my entrepreneur journey. So we come up with this idea. But then you ended up not, even though you raised more than the money you would have needed. Let's not play with that, baby. The More than the money you would have needed. Why didn't you get the Barbie van? Because, well, I knew it was going to take a couple days. And we went to this cool church, and one day it said that they would be doing a cool, awesome soccer game. And I, and they said it was cheap, $90, I told them, and they said that's almost $100. So I wanted to raise money Wait, to you do said the it was, soccer Wait, you said it was $90? Yeah. And you wanted, so you wanted to do soccer camp. The church we were going to uh-huh. had a soccer camp. And you heard about it, and so you wanted to do soccer camp, and you found out it was $90. And then uh-huh. you, f- you found out that, because at first you thought that was not very much money, right? Yeah, because they said it was cheap. And then so you, you just believed them, oh, 90 bucks, that's cheap. That's like, you know, a couple Cokes or something. We, we can do that. And then you found out that it was almost $100, and you know that $100 to you is a lot of money, right? It's almost 100 and 100 is a lot. So then was it, whose idea was it? Was it your idea? Whose idea was it to use your business idea which we hadn't actually started yet we've just been talking about it to do for soccer camp instead of your uh, barbie thing whose idea was that yours or mommy's it was mine because i really like like toys especially barbie toys and back then i didn't know elsa because it wasn't out and um and I heard about this and I really want to do sports and that's like the only sport that I like. I like it over, it's the only sport that I know that I like, well, except for um, volleyball, I mean, dodgeball, I like that. You like um, disc golf. Yeah, I didn't love that sport. Um, well, <laughs> I Every like entrepreneur to... listening to this, you just offended them. Oh. Hey. Um, <laughs> I didn't like football, didn't like, I, th- I thought, um, it's too sweaty and I didn't like it. And um, baseball, you know, there's a lot of dirt and you have to like stay in this place for a long time. It's boring. And you might hit your face and someone might hit your face with the ball. And so I heard about soccer and I know what soccer is. I love the idea, so I wanted that. Okay, so this was your first sports time. So let's jump back to the business side because the people listening here are entrepreneurs. They're other people who have businesses or want to start businesses. So we want to kind of follow your journey and get some business advice from you, okay? Mm -hmm. So like I said, your goal was to make $90 and maybe a little extra because 
we're not exactly a sports family. I mean, your mo- mommy basically is allergic to sports, and daddy did. Daddy was a swimmer. I mean, I, when I was a little kid, I did basketball, but like in high school, I swam, so not a lot of equipment required there. So we obviously needed some extra stuff like cleats and, and we had shoes, but they needed laces and stuff like that. So the goal was to raise ninety dollars, and if we could raise a little extra, then, or if you could raise a little extra, I should say, that would buy you a couple of the little extra accessories. And then you know we figured anything over that, mommy and daddy would cover. But we just kind of thought it was cool that you wanted to pay for your own thing. I particularly thought it was cool because I knew that you would value soccer much more if you paid for it versus if you did it yourself, or if we paid it for you. Yeah, that's it's more fun going to the door than daddy and mine just giving me the money. And the other thing, so yeah, you got to earn it for yourself. Um, and then the other part of it is, now we, we homeschool, and so I talked about wanting to have like a business class, and I hadn't got around any kind of like formal curriculum. And I mean, honestly, she's six. Um, she's, she's a bright kid, but like, there's only so many things I'm going to sit down textbook style teach her so like I said it's been so far listening to the audiobooks answering all of her questions and then let's let's actually do it right rather than me coming up with some terms and this or that like let's have her do a business so she started the cookie business so you got mommy was going to make the cookies for you because you couldn't do that right mm-hmm. but I want to start helping her yeah so mommy was doing the cookies I came up with some of the idea stuff which really was just to let you do it and let's go door to door And then, what was, you have a little brother, what was his job? His job was to taste, just like me. Well, To taste all the, he was the (laughs) chief taster. Yeah. And he, I'll tell you what, I've never seen someone more disciplined or harder worker at their job. He was never late, he always showed up to work on time, and he tasted every one of those cookies he could, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) Okay. So did I. So, now it comes time to actually go door to door. So, mommy makes the cookies. The, you guys wrapped them up in pretty bags. You hand wrote thank you notes, right? So everyone who bought cookies, not only did they get the cookies in a nice little bag, but they also got a note from you personally that you, Lily, as the CEO of this company, wrote, right? So here's my question. You're you're dressed up. You're like little, little Red Riding Hood here, right? With your basket of cookies. You're going to go out. Um, weren't you scared to knock on doors of total strangers? Not really, because I knew if they were going to try to um, hurt me, they wouldn't hurt me unless I was alone if they were bad, if they were going to hurt me, because I had like John Daddy, and, um... Well, what about, says, okay, so you didn't think someone was going to, like, actually attack you or yeah. anything, but but beyond that, like, that's unrealistic, hopefully, in most, most of the time, um, <laughs> what about... Just like being nervous, like knocking on someone's door and having it. Like you're you're six. I know I keep calling you seven, but you're six. You're not seven yet. How isn't that scary? Like what aren't you wouldn't you rather like get a spanking or be grounded or eat like vegetables and have to go knock on the door of some like scary grown up and isn't that terrifying for a little kid your age? No, because actually I like to one of the reasons I like to make lots of friends is especially grown up friends. I mean, especially kid ones, but I make grown up ones too. And, um, and I'm actually really friendly. It's funny because I know I listened a few years back when I was still in the car business. I started listening to Grant Cardone, and he talked about how he lets his kids stay outgoing. He talked about how kids are closers and his daughter's a closer, and he talked about how, don't touch that. He talked about how she's fascinated with the microphone and wants to touch it. She, uh, he talked about how like one of the worst disservices we do to our children is we're always like, don't do this, don't talk to strangers, you know, don't go to that person, and we make them so afraid. So obviously there are limitations, and we've had to talk to her, especially when we're uh, uh, associate pastors, and we'd be at like big potlucks and stuff. We'd have to train her like, if so, I know you're friendly, but if you know, it's fine to talk to new people, but if someone ever tries to get you to leave, you need to run to mommy or daddy. So like, you know, we had to teach her stuff, but I've always done my best to just let her be outgoing like we can't go to the store anywhere without her making one or two friends um she's gonna tell the cashier all about our day what we're doing where we're going so she's always making friends she's very outgoing but so that's that's one thing right to just to talk and make a friend but 
you were asking these people for money. You wanted them to like buy something from you. That didn't make you nervous at all to knock on their door and try to sell them something? No, but a couple of houses I did kind of um, do something with my fingers and I was kind of nervous on some ones, but not a lot of them. Did you find that it got easier as you did more houses and you were getting more yeses? Yeah, and I was really excited when um da- they told me at this hey, wait, house. We'll get to that. We'll get to that story in a second. We'll wrap up that story. Okay. So I had another question for you, and it was, oh yeah, what was your sales process? What did you do? So you walked up to a door, you knocked on the door, and when someone answered, what did you say? I said, hi, my name is Lily. I'm raising money to go to soccer camp. Would you like to buy half a dozen or a whole dozen for $5? Half a dozen is for $5 and 10 dozen is for her, um, I mean, a whole dozen is for $10. And then that was the first time. And then the second time we realized that it was easier to just do half a dozen, right? So then you'd say, would you like to buy half a dozen cookies for $5? Now you had a few people tell you that was too expensive, right? Yeah. But the... They bought cookies anyways, didn't they? Yeah. You know, because you, it's funny, kids, man, they are, Grant Cardone's right, they're closers. She did exactly what she should. She had people that would ask or that would make a comment. They'd, they'd balk at the price, right? They'd look at me like, are you, are you kidding me? And they'd be like, $5 for half a dozen. Like, I remember back in the day when blah, blah, blah. And she would just acknowledge it. Oops, sorry. She would just acknowledge it and agree with him. Like, yeah, that's a lot of money. And then she would go for the clothes. Yep, that's a lot of money. And she's like, would you like to buy them? And I'm telling you, out of the almost $300 we made, I mean, there were houses that didn't answer, but out of all the people she asked, there was only one person that said no. Um, One person that said no, one person that said, yes, but I don't have any money, because he was just like working on his motorcycle. He said, "Um, come back around in a little bit, and then if you see the white car, my girlfriend will be home, and she'll buy them. Yellow. What'd I say? White. You said white. I said white? Okay, yellow. Yellow car, and she'll buy them. So there was one no and one come back later, and then we didn't even get to come back later because we sold out before we could. We couldn't even make it around the block. We would sell out of everything. Um, Okay, so we'll wrap this up with with a funny story that she loves to tell. Go ahead. Tell your story. Um, One house we do, they said... um, um, now don't be upset if they say no. They've um, said no to a lot of people who try to sell stuff, but they didn't have no soliciting. And he said that he tried to sell some something, and they said no. And I, I will. I, I will say to add to that, um, it's a house. Stop. It's a house that. So we are back in. We're in the house uh, that I grew up in, and we're currently living there. It's, my parents own it. We're renting it. And uh, I've tried to raise money. I've tried to do fundraisers. I've tried to sell stuff I, for our church, stuff for Atwater High School, um, for the school, which we just live at literally just a few blocks from the school. And so normally everyone, if it's for the school, is super supportive and nothing. I've never gotten these people to buy. And they're generally, they're pretty rude about it. Like one time they own a car wash in town, right? So one time I said, hey, we're doing a fundraiser because we're going to uh, Mexico to build build a church and help help kids who are living like um in a in like a landfill basically help them That's nice. and they said and so i said would you like to like buy a ticket to a car wash and they're like no we own the car wash in town and I'm, I'm thinking like okay so just because you own a car wash i mean it's like seven dollars for a ticket or whatever like if you own a car wash you're you're probably pretty successful you could buy a couple of tickets don't actually bring your cars down because no one Teenagers do a horrible job washing cars at fundraisers just to support the kids going over to Mexico to help build homes and churches. They're like, no, we own the car wash. We would never buy from anyone else. So I wanted to warn her, like, okay, so you've not been told no, really. And so I wanted her to not go up there because she'd been getting yes, 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 yes. I think we had two bags left. I didn't want her to get upset if they were rude and basically told her to go away and they don't want cookies. So then what happened, Lily, when you knocked on the door? I said, hi, my name is Lily, do, do you, I'm, I'm raising money to go to soccer camp, would you like to buy a half a dozen cookies um, for five dollars? And they said, and they said no. No, they said yes. What? And they gave me more than they were supposed to pay. And we didn't have to give 
Okay, change. So, yes, the people I had gone to a half dozen times never could sell. Um, they bought, they didn't even know what it was. So they said, what kind of cookies are they? They were snickerdoodles, and they'd never heard of snickerdoodles. So they just bought some random cookie that they don't even know what it tastes like. It was, like I said, $5 for half a dozen. They paid, they gave her $11. So they gave her over, I mean, that's a huge tip. It was only $5. They give you $6 extra as a tip. And what did you say as we walked away? You were like, yes. And then what did you say to me? I beat you, Daddy. And what else did you say? I'm better salesman than you are. Yeah. And she tells this story everywhere we go. So everywhere we go, she says that she's a better salesman than me. Everyone that doesn't know that yet that I know, I tell them that story that I told you. Okay, so you're a better salesman than me, right? Yeah. Okay, so Daddy um, has a course that he does. It's an email course where people can sign up for it. And once they pay for it, they get to log in and they can watch the videos and there's an ebook and stuff like that. And it teaches people how to use email better for their freelancing or for their business to email people and set mm -hmm. up appointments to sell more stuff. So since you're a better salesperson than me, why don't you tell everyone there um, that they how about how they should buy my email course? Um, you should. What do you mean? Like, buy like that? they should buy it. So they should go to they should go to my website, um, nateideas.com. So you can just say go to my daddy's website, and tell them that they should click on the courses part and that they should buy your my email course because it'll help them make more money. Go to my daddy's email course and click the um. Just the, so you're the salesperson. The um button and um and you should buy my dad's thing because it can uh, help you how to raise, um make a business help them to grow their business make I more sales let me ask you this why why should they buy it because i love my daddy and he should make lots of money for us to so stay living in our house <laughs> you don't want me to go back to work no you like me working at home does Daddy take you to the park a lot of times in the mornings? Yes. All right. Okay. So that is the interview with Lily. So thank you, Lily, for coming on as a guest. You're welcome. So just to wrap up here, um, if you're out there and you're an entrepreneur and you've got kids, definitely don't feel like it's something that is only an adult topic. As you can see, well, first off, I would have loved to have been taught more entrepreneur stuff. My dad and my grandpa both had businesses and neither one of them, then they, they both left their business and then went into full-time jobs. Neither one of them taught me anything about being an entrepreneur or even that that's an option other than having a full-time job. I had to figure it all out on my own. I'm like, hey, you guys could have at least, you know, give me some pointers, told me, you know, this is an option, uh, you know, so I didn't have to figure out everything the hard way. So I believe really strongly in giving my daughter the option when it comes to college, when it comes to job versus business, all this stuff. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Um, I don't know, maybe your kid wants to be a doctor and then at that point, obviously there's really only one track for that. They gotta go to school, they gotta you know, become a doctor. But you know, it's, it's not the only option, obviously, being an entrepreneur, as you guys know, you're listening, getting tips on how to do stuff. I, I suggest you uh, include your kids on stuff. I mean, I'll have my wife on here uh, as an interview before you know, one of these days and you know talk about how she supports me and you know she actually sometimes even does does some work for me helps me out with stuff um cuts down having to use a virtual free uh f virtual assistant and uh anyway so yeah i just encourage you you know don't be uh, don't hide it from your kids like you know they're smart they can figure out my son granted he's a lot younger he has no interest in business at all he's, he's three he's three so who knows that might change um but you know what? Obviously, that's his choice. If he decides he wants to grow up and be, I don't know, what do you think he'd want to be? Like, like a, probably a cowboy, huh? <laughs> maybe a cowboy. Maybe an astronaut because he likes to fly. Yeah, or maybe a assist. superhero. Yeah. Anyways, you know, if he grows up and decides he wants to get a job somewhere or whatever, that's he, cool. But if Lily decides, you know, let's just uh, expose him to it. I mean, include them on it. And then it's not as hard like when daddy does have to go down to his other office and work all day or if I'm here and I have to like you guys can't come in because I'm busy working all day um, it makes it easier because you understand more and you understand more about business and you, you, you it's not like I'm just leaving all the time huh yeah alright you want to give them any advice anyone out there who's trying to start their business or grow their business you want to give them any business advice yeah 
Um, if you're young and you're listening to this, first I think you should start your business on going door to door and selling something. So they should not wait for the perfect time or the perfect system. They should just start hustling and they should get out there and just, even if they have to knock on doors, just start trying to sell what they have. Yep. Okay. Thank you for coming on. Thanks. All right. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Heroes Podcast. If you enjoyed the show today, please head over to iTunes and give us a rating and review. It really helps to help get the word out there. And of course, feel free to share this with any of your friends on any of your preferred social networks. And if you're looking for more information about the Business Heroes Podcast, where you can find more episodes and kind of more about what we do, check out bizdevheroes.com. That's B I Z D E V heroes.com. Once again, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.